I'd like to take a look at all three of the games from round eight of the Beagle Grand Master Tournament, taking in some of the most important moments. I'd like to start with the game Wojtaszek against Giri, and we join the game after 21 moves. Wojtaszek with white has a slight advantage, but I should say, even though this is you know round roundabout move 20, the players were playing incredibly quickly, and well, as both players admitted afterwards, this was all part of their home preparation. Um, here, well, Giri found a very nice way to get out of his difficulties. You can see this knight is quite active. It might spin round here to e5. Um, sometimes th this pawn break could be useful. So Giri played knight f5. That's an excellent move. The knights would love to hop into d4, and then black can even think about getting some advantage there. But there's a drawback with this. Wojtaszek exchanged and then took the pawn on h5, so now he's a clear pawn up. But Giri bashed out his next move, rook g8, excellent move. Threat, rook takes pawn. There are three ways of defending this pawn. You could play f4, you could play h4, or you could play rook g1. All three have problems. <laughs> First of all, let's look at rook g1. This has actually been played before, but, well, it's not that good. After rook h8, well, it's as good as, as, as the others, actually. Then you can see the rook has moved away from the h-pawn, the knight moves back, and black captures on h2 and equalizes the game. What about f4? Once again, we have rook h8. And now, there is because the f-pawn has moved up, there's a problem because this pin is rather problematic for white and if the knight comes here this is still a good move actually and the rook moves away and black will take here or will check here and take this pawn so black will equalize there as well so in the game Wojtaszek after some th fairly long think played h4 but now the rook switches to, to h8 again, and there's a problem. The knight moves. Giri recaptured the pawn, and actually he's very close to equality here. Wojtaszek tried for some time to squeeze something out of this endgame, but it's, it should be a draw. So good defense from Anish Giri. Now next up is the game between Pentala Hari Krishna and Alexander Motilev. It was a Karakhan, you can see that from this very familiar pawn structure. And Hari Krishna has a slight initiative with this pawn on f5. At first I thought rook a d8 might be a good move. I think it's not a bad move actually, looking at the queen, but queen f4 still keeps a little initiative for white. Motilev thought for some time here and came up with actually a very nice idea, but needed to be calculated precisely. He exchanged on e5, and then took on f5. If pawn takes knight, then this pin <laughs> comes into play, and actually black is fine here. But knight takes f5. Now this is dangerous. This knight is in excellent position. But Motilev had calculated this. Black is a pawn up, but now white wins it back with this check. And rook takes knight. Now at first glance, this looks very dangerous for black because the king position has been opened. This pawn is vulnerable. But actually, white's king is also not in the best position. Actually, it would be better if it were tucked away... In, in the corner or uh, well with b3 and king b2 but on c1 it's a little bit vulnerable and this is a very simple move bringing the rook into play but it's a very strong move obviously there's a threat to take on e1 and if rook takes queen takes and in this end game black is actually fine uh, the fourth sequence 
and black picks up this pawn here, so that's one line that had to be calculated carefully. So Hare Krishna nudged the rook to the side, still looks quite menacing, potentially these threats, but an excellent move. Rook e2. Now, here's a tricky line. Queen takes h6, looks terrifying, but Motilev had calculated that after the check, then queen a5 is a good move. So the rook on e1 is defended by this x-ray, and after here, well, let's say rook g1 should be fine for black. Uh, there are threats to take here, perhaps threats to check, maybe sometimes taking here. Black has sufficient counterplay. So Hare Krishna, instead of taking the pawn, moved the queen up to b4. Now black could even play for a win with queen g3. White should be all right, but instead Motilev played rook takes g2, which leads to a forced draw. Hare Krishna took on f7. Queen takes, rook takes. Now if king takes rook, this would be a mistake. White would have some hope for advantage there. The queen is, is powerful, but instead of taking the rook, Motilev forced a draw by perpetual check. And Hare Krishna just brought the king back, and that was that. If the king goes up the board, that would not be too bright, because rook g4 skewers. So the players repeated the position and, and a draw was agreed. Okay, next game. Maxime vachy le -Grave against Ho Ifan. Uh, Maxime didn't play the opening terribly well and at this stage black is fine. Um, Ho took on f3 and then took on d4. And now Maxime has a little trick. Bishop takes f5. You see, uncovering an attack on the rook. Rook takes d1 check. Queen takes d1. And now the point is that e takes f5 can be met by queen d5 check with a double attack. In fact, this is what black should play. And the position looks to me to be completely equal. But it's interesting that Ho Ifan, I've noticed this quite often with her games, she likes to defend ag very actively. So instead of going for that line, she chose rook f8, and she thought this should be fine for black. Well, it probably is with some accuracy. So her idea is to target the f2 pawn. You can see that very plainly. And white has to come back with a bishop. The problem is, if white can un untangle from this position and then set up a bishop on e4, then this could be rather uncomfortable for black's king. But OK, queen f6, good move. So keeping, keeping the pressure on the f-file, queen e2. And bishop d4, okay, the bishop stands nicely here. And now uh, Ho waited with king h8. Now you see what white would love to do if I gave black, if I gave white four moves in a row, rook c2, defending the pawn, bishop e4, g3, king g2, you slowly unwind, and then you can start to build pressure on this diagonal. That would be good. But it's not easy to achieve that. First of all, um, MVL played h3 to solve any back rank problems, probably a necessary move. Now he played rook c6, let's have, just have a look and see what happens if rook c2. So as I said, with the threat of bishop e4, but in fact black is fine here if black reacts quickly, so queen a1 check is a good move. And if the king comes to h2, well there are problems here. Queen e5 check is is good enough, simply repeating the position actually. Uh, let's go back. 
So after queen a1, queen f1, and again queen e5, and it, it's black is active enough here. Okay, back to this position. b6, rook c6 was tried. Bishop b5, good move, good move. Shielding this isolated pawn. And white still can't play g3. Queen f5, another good move from, from Ho Ifan. And it's, you know, she's active enough and white can't quite get control, but it's close. And now MVL just felt that he should simplify, he couldn't really see anything better. Just one last tricky move, if he can just embed this bishop here without any difficulties, then that could be interesting. But black has enough counterplay here after this move. And now the game simplified. And after this, well, black really has no difficulties. G6 is coming soon, and well, after a few moves, the players agree to a draw. So Ho Ifan got there in the end. She managed to draw the game, but it might have been simpler. Well, she admitted afterwards it might have been simpler just to go for the heavy piece endgame. So all three games were drawn in round eight, which means that Maxime Vachelegrave still has one and a half a one and a half point lead, but in round nine he has the black pieces against Geary. That's gonna be his last big test probably.